Another video for you guys in this planned series of videos for on the welding side more so than the machining side. We will get we will get back to the machining side later, but just want to touch on a few uh, planned videos about welding and more so about getting you started rowing rather than showing you how to weld. There's plenty of videos on there how to weld, but we might touch over it anyway if I think of something that might be worthwhile. If I'm not repeating a video, it's already been done already 20 times on YouTube. A little bit hard to find information that's not already covered, but. I uh, just wanted to cover the more theory side of it rather than the actual how to do it more so and, and these sort of videos might help you more so to get started. I've already started off the series with the, the cheap welders and just some of the things to think about when you when you are going to buy a welder. Just be careful of something you just talked about in that video if you haven't already watched it. could be interesting if you're thinking about buying a welding machine, go back and watch that one. There is some information there that might be helpful if you are thinking about buying a welder. But getting on to this video now, uh, what I brought you here for, I've got you pointed at my Miller Dynasty 350 away from the Lincoln, which I showed you in the previous video. There's a bit more information you can sort of understand on this one, so that's why I sort of picked this welder just to, um, or power supply, whatever you want, however you want to say it, um, of um, how to set the pre-flow and post-flow, not in this particular machine, but just as some guidelines more so rather than a breakdown of the machine. They're fairly straightforward. You just go through the whole touch panels down the bottom here. They're, they're great. If you've got one, I don't need to tell you how good they are. Uh, pay more, get more with most things, and yeah, you just go along. I think the even the more the cheaper welders are starting to duplicate the more expensive welders now with these press buttons and menu. You can scroll through different things. So you've got your, we're working on this one at the moment, the pre and the post. We won't worry about doing any of the others. I'm not trying to sell you the machine. So you've got your pre and post so for those who are not familiar pre is obviously before you start welding and post is after you finish welding so after you extinguish the arc that's the gas running after the actual arc ends and the gas keeps running so these will vary but generally on default setting or where they are set on a machine you cannot adjust like the Lincoln that I showed you in the in the cheap welders video um, they're not adjustable, but you can get into the board uh, and adjust them if you know what to do. Make sure you turn the right one, but sometimes you can take them to a, a dealer or a guy's pretty switched on with, with um, welding machines, and they can adjust that if you want to change that to a higher setting or a lower setting, but you probably wouldn't want to turn it down from where the dof default setting is, once you got that out. So the default setting is where the mill is set at the moment, which is about 0.4 or half a second thereabouts. And it goes, you can just scroll all the way up, you know, up, up to whatever you want, to whatever you might need. The pre-flow, the pre -flow, you probably don't need a lot of pre-flow uh, as far as I'm getting up to, into, but there could be applications that are well, getting up to 25 seconds. Obviously, you're not going to be waiting 25 seconds to start welding. You're probably already falling asleep. But the the adjustment on there is good for certain types of metal with the dynasty is pointed at the higher end of welding, so it's not just a welding machine to stick two pieces of metal together, it's to stick to two pieces of metal together uh, well, I suppose, or do it do it the best way that you can, and that goes all the way down to zero. So as I say, default setting is about 0.4, which is about where I leave it, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, somewhere around there anyway, if you've got adjustable pre-flow, some of the cheaper welders have got it now. And in, as I say, in general, where it's set as a default, I leave that about 0.4. As I say, that works. That's, so that's just before your arc starts, just gives that split second to get some gas before you start the arc, otherwise you can contaminate your tungsten. And scrolling down into post, uh, I set that at about 9, so it's welding on aluminium at the moment. That might vary. Um, anything basically non-ferrous, okay? In other words, for anything that's non-carbon material, so your your brass, copper, aluminium, magnesium, that pretty much covers it uh, in your AC range um, for your non-ferrous. Uh, this is my, mainly what this machine gets used for. I do do some DC, but, but, but I've got the Lincoln to do the DC work up to 160 amp, which is more than enough for, for TIG welding. Um, and that's enough for doing anything that I would need to do. All the DC works so anything from mild steels to titanium I do with the little uh, Lincoln, as I showed in that um, earlier video with the comparing the, or talking about cheaper welders. But as far as post goes, getting back to the point now, as far as post flow goes, 
Um, depending on what you're welding, generally for general welding, um, I normally set that about 9, 10, 10 seconds, so that should flow after you've entered the arc. And normally I set that around there. Um, if you're welding more exotic metals like titanium, if you're welding with DC on this machine, uh, you probably want to ramp that up a little bit further. That will depend on the colour of the material, so how to set that, where, how to set the post, probably more so than the pre-gas, is look at your arc. As the arc is cooling down, or as the electrode's cooling down, the arc's cooling down, as the electrode's cooling down, I'll eventually get that right. As your electrode's cooling down, it's got to lose all its colour, and then the gas should probably flow for about another second, two seconds. I'll leave it up to you. It depends if you're paying for the gas or someone else is paying for the gas. So if you're paying for the gas, you'll probably keep it a bit leaner. If someone else is paying for the gas, you could leave it on for 30 seconds. You couldn't care less. But when you're paying for it yourself, you usually try to be a little bit more on the numbers, how long the post flow runs for. So if you're getting up into your titaniums and things like that, you might want to, you might want to get a little bit higher, you know, probably up to 20 seconds or things like that. So that's totally up to you, depending on the amperage that you're welding at. There's no set number to run that at. Same thing if you're welding on any metal on your post flow, depending on how hot the electrode is and what material you're welding. The material in general doesn't need much post. Normally you can run that back down around about the 10 second mark so for your alleys and things like that. But if you want to, for some reason, cool something down, you can run the post a little bit higher, as I say. But the only thing that really needs a lot of post gas is titanium. So it's got to have the metal return back to its... Uh, how can I say? I won't, I won't put the technical term on it, but basically so it's, it's returned to its normalised, I suppose you could say, back to its cooled state. That's where you want to have your post flow running and you keep your torch on the weld. So if you've ever welded titanium, you've watched, watched videos on YouTube of guys welding titanium, you normally always need to run a lot of post. As I say, that will vary depending on what you're actually welding. So but in general, for general settings, about the 10 second mark is generally enough for most things. And as I say, depending on what you want to be welding, that will vary. And same with the pre, you can run a little bit more pre-gas. If you're into a corny, you can maybe run that up to a couple of seconds. You, know, you can ramp that up into maybe two or three seconds, but you don't need a lot normally. One to two seconds is generally enough. I'll just put that back to my default. So that's pretty much it for this video. If there's any questions, get back to me in the comments. But otherwise, hopefully this video is useful for you guys who are, who are following along. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. We'll probably talk about water coolers on this particular machine. We want to get back to the gas series and we'll be talking about um, different gas, uh, not so much different types of gas, but more so uses of gas and things like that as far as setting up your gas flow and comparing renting bottles versus buying bottles. So uh, but we'll sort of cover that in, in, the, in the video coming up anyway. I want to get onto that one. We were talking about which one works out more economical, I suppose, for renting or buying. So... And I'll leave that one for the nut for that nut, for that video anyway. I look forward to seeing you guys on there. Okay, that'll do for this one. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.